Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be an updated World Chalice deck profile for post Flames of Destruction, basically. There are new cards, there are new World Legacy cards, there are Nightmare cards, there are stuff like that, that people have been asking me, how many do you play, are there any new combos, all that sort of stuff, and I've been trying to do a lot of testing with this deck in particular to see if the benefit of anything that the new set provides actually changes the dynamic of the deck at all. But ultimately, <laughs> I've just been I've just been sitting here trying to optimize the deck back to doing whatever its uh, whatever its core function was that it did best. Uh, because honestly, there's not really that much to gain from the new set. People are just all hyped to put new nightmare cards in this deck, but they actually don't really solve any of the problems the deck has because most of them have effects that remove cards from the field when you're going second. However, this deck sucks going second. The extra deck is really tight. Uh, so, like, trying to fit Nightmare cards into it while also maintaining the optimization and the strength of the deck itself gets, you know, hindered, all that sort of stuff. But this is the deck list that I've been having the most success with. I've definitely tried several, several different builds uh, with, like, more World Chalice names in it to make the Nightmare cards easier to make, uh, more World Legacy support cards, more Nightmare cards in the extra deck, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but this is ultimately the list that I have had the most success with since I've decided to stop like trying to add extra things to the deck and literally just try to optimize the deck to be able to play as much as it can going first, which has always been the deck's biggest strength. But anyway, deck list is 40 cards. It starts out with 8 World Chalice monsters, those being 3 Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, 3 World Legacy World Chalice, 1 World Chalice Guard Dragon, and 1 Chosen by the World Chalice. Uh, this is pretty standard. Some people play Beckend over this, but... This has better synergy with e -Telly and it makes the deck overall a little bit better in terms of what you can access with your hand traps, so that's why I personally like that. But then from there, the obvious three Venus and three Shine Balls. If you're not playing this in World Chalice, then you're just playing the deck wrong, and you don't really want to see success with the deck, apparently. Uh, because, like, this is definitely just the best card. Like, it's a one-card Skull Dread at minimum, uh, and it only gets better when we get things like Summon Sorceress, which is something that actually does benefit the deck a lot. Uh, and then two copies of Exodius, the Ultimate Forbidden Lord. I've thought about cutting this to one, uh, but I like it at two. Uh, it combos well with Venus, allowing you to do a combo that results in you drawing three off Ningirsu and then making Skull Dread um, with just Venus plus Exodius. So like that's a really good combo uh, to perform. Uh, it's something that I enjoyed performing, like just simple two-card combos that have high impact yields. Uh, and this just helps benefit. Uh, it helps benefit that combo, those combo sequences, as well as just being a hard reset for button for the deck is really good. Some people don't prefer to play this, but I still do because I like to have a longevity game plan. Even though this deck does tend to suck more and more the longer into the game you get, uh, this is an extender and a recovery option. So uh, it just really depends. Like you could be playing against Rogue or against Stun or against Altergeist, and this card has a lot more value in those matchups because the game is inherently a bit slower meaning that it can be a bit more in your favor. Uh, but that's pretty much it for all the, like, monsters itself. The only thing that is, like, the rest of the monster lineup is uh, hand traps and garnets, essentially. Uh, but two copies of Ghost Ogre and two copies of Ash Blossom for hand traps. Uh, hand traps is something that I really do not like in this deck, but at the same time, they're kind of needed because this deck is so bad at going second. Um, you kind of have to be able to play these cards and, like, not get FTK'd, not get blown out. Um... And they're just generically more versatile uh, than, like, if you played other cards that would be suited for going second, like Twin Twister or Igeki or whatever. Uh, those, like, blowout type cards. These are typically a bit more versatile, specifically Ghost Ogre, because of Emergency Teleport turning into another trap card on your opponent's turn. If you draw it mid-combo and don't need to use it, you can e Telly for Ghost Ogre on your opponent's turn, send Ghost Ogre from field. That's essentially a trap card. Um... And, like, the fact that these are monsters as well, because that means that they are actual combo pieces, rather than just being, like, power spells and power traps, uh, that would, uh, that would make it, like, a little bit easier on you going second, but, like, these are actual, like, combo pieces, because you can discard them for Lee, you can summon them out of your hand off Skull Dread or Firewall, uh, if you're, you know, trying to continue a combo sequence moving. And all that sort of stuff, but I digress. Last two monsters in the deck, bringing it to 22 monsters, is one Gym Knight Lazuli and one Gamma Seal Sea Turtle Kaiju. I'm not playing Eva anymore. Uh, the card just, I got way too tired of how much it bricks. Um, it just, it's a very bricky card by nature. Herald of the Orange Light is only really beneficial, like, as a hand trap when you're going first, so it's not even like you're adding going second cards to the deck. You have to get very lucky for Herald of the Orange Light to even be able to negate a card, and even then, you're using two cards to negate one card. 
on your opponent's first turn, meaning that you could be potentially like screwing yourself out of resources on your following turn, especially since the deck already is bad enough at playing going second. There are some merits to Eva um, with like playing more heavy nightmare packages in the deck, which is something I definitely did try. Uh, because you could discard Eva for a Nightmare card effect um, and then get like a plus off of that. But it ultimately wasn't worth, the the reward was not worth like the investment that you were making into deck building. And like Herald of, the Arc, uh, Herald of the Orange Light is just like an awful card. Its best application is normal summoning it and using it for transmodify. And that's like the only way that the Eva package at all contributes to any of your plays. Like actually lets you start playing. Uh, so I decided to just play cards that actually like let me play the game consistently. Um, the deck may have a lower overall, like, ooh, I'm getting all these pluses, uh, ceiling in terms of Brilliant Fusion is only a plus one instead of, like, a plus two, like it is with Eva, uh, but, like, the thing is the deck is a bit more consistent overall, except for the Lazuli, like, you can play Garnet instead of Lazuli, but whenever I'm not playing Eva, I prefer to play Lazuli because if you Brilliant Fusion late, then it turns into a plus one, um, you could play Garnet instead because Garnet actually isn't a brick in this deck because it's a vanilla, um, and, like, this deck works around those. Uh, but I just prefer Lazuli whenever I'm not playing Eva because I want my Brilliant Fusion to get more value, possibly. Uh, and Lazuli is, shouldn't really be a problem because the deck has access to Saryuja um, and Exodius. So, like, you can put uh, Lazuli in Grave by uh, either linking away with it or by discarding it with Lee and then uh, then Exodiusing it back to your deck. So, it's never really been an issue for me to get it back into deck, even though it isn't Garnet. Uh, so, like... It's not really that big of an issue, at least in my eyes. But like I said, that's 22 monsters uh, for spells, two Kyoto Waterfront, and one Terraforming. Uh, I like this ratio specifically. Uh, it just makes your deck a bit more consistent overall in the uh, in the minimalistic long game, if that can even be a term that I could use. Uh, if you just play three Kyoto Waterfronts, uh, if you drew a Waterfront, then you still have two Waterfronts left in your deck, meaning that your Ningirsu and your Saryuja are going to be potentially hitting that card more often. Uh, meanwhile, if you have this terraforming, if you draw the terraforming instead of the waterfront, you can play it, search waterfront, and now instead of having two waterfronts left in your deck, you've still filled the, uh, the consistency, uh, window of having three waterfronts in your deck, essentially, but if you draw the terraforming for waterfront, then you only have one waterfront left in your deck afterwards, meaning your Ningirsu draws and your Saryuja draws will be at least a tiny marginal percent more consistent, and that is something that actually matters in the long scope of a tournament. Like, the, the, the tiny, tiny consistency gains that you can get anywhere where you can get them are typically worth it. Which is why I'm not playing Eva. Because that card is, a man, Jesus. I just keep drawing those cards and they're awful in my hand. <laughs> if I could play Eva, I would play Eva in every World Chalice list that I could ever, ever play. If I could guarantee that I'm never going to open Herald of the Orange Light or Eva in any of my opening hands ever. Um, and Shine Balls as well. Like, if you, if I could, if I could guarantee that I would never draw Shine Balls or any part of the Eva package, I would play Eva in every single World Chalice list until the end of time. Uh, but that's just not how Yu-Gi-Oh! works. Uh, but anyway, for the rest of the spells, uh, three Brilliant Fusions, uh, three Transmodifies, even without the Eva package, like, you really just need consistent ways to get to Venus. Um, like, you just need these for consistency enabling. Uh, it makes no sense to play less than three. Um, you could play two. There was one event that I did play it where I played two in the main and sided the third. And I sided it in when I was taking out my hand traps going first so that I had a more consistent deck at post-siding. Uh, that was a cool little theory. Uh, but basically, there should probably always be three in your list because Brilliant Fusion makes it live, Foolish makes it live, Shine Ball makes it live, Lee makes it live. That's ten cards that make it live. That means that that's 13 copies of Venus that you can potentially have when combining them with Transmodify. But now, a tech that I'm playing that I actually really enjoy and people might think is a bit strange is machine duplication now these are cards that were taken uh they're taking the place of like Her eva slots essentially because the deck is very venus focused and i don't really like that i've been very vocal in my dislike of how the deck basically got all of its extra options removed from it like with gofu going from three to one to zero dandelion being gone all that stuff the deck basically had all these other options for play that didn't involve Venus, but now the deck is literally, you need Venus or else you can make zero plays because of how the game has progressed in terms of like what cards are hit on the Forbidden Limited list and whatnot. Uh, Machine Duplication, its only target is World Legacy World Chalice um, because it's a level 5 machine. But I played this card in the past, like way in the past, like p before we had Trigate Wizard in the past. And I loved it then because it is essentially a combo piece. Uh, it's a card that allows you to play games 
without Venus, or it makes your Venus hands better. You have so many ways to access World Legacy World Chalice. You can draw it, you have the Lee, you have Foolish 4 Lee, Brilliant Fusion 4 Lee. Uh, so essentially, same thing with Transmodify, you have 10 cards in the deck that assist making this card live. And so what this card allows you to do is it allows you to just normal summon a World Legacy World Chalice, Machine Dupe, two more out, and then you have multiple copies of monsters on the field. This is essentially just like a little play extender. Like, this sort of takes the place of Gofu, only in a worse way, because like, you just get, it's like, if you had a card that generated two tokens, but it only works with World Legacy World Chalice, but that's fine, because that's your entire deck. Um, it's, it's one of those cards that like, it lets you play through Disruption, uh, because like it lets you get more World Legacy World Chalices on the field, that's more monsters on the field for easy value, and stuff like that. And it's actually really easy to resolve one, if not two of these in a turn. I almost want to play three of them in the main, but as of right now, I've settled on two as a number. Uh, because you have Exodius in the deck, so like you can keep a World Legacy World Chalice on the field, link the two away that you summon off Machine Duplication the first time, and then you can Exodius them back into your deck and then Machine Dupe the other two out again, because Machine Dupe is not a hard once per turn. And then, like, you have things like Sir Yuja that make this card really, really reliable to resolve for full value. The last time I played this card, like I said, it was before we even had Trigate Wizard, way before we even had Sir Yuja Skulldred, and this card was okay even then, because, like, again, it's a card that gives you more combo pieces. It's a card that allows you to play your deck uh, by giving you more monsters. Uh, like, even a hand that just lets you normal summon World Legacy World Chalice and then Machine Dupe. So, like, a hand with a vanilla... Um, or just like a way to put Imduk on the field, World Legacy, World Chalice, and Machine Duplication, that by itself is an Ingirsu draw 4, with Orem, and Ingirsu, and two World Chalice monsters. So that's an Ingirsu draw 2, that also lets you make Sir Yuja Skulldred if your hand still isn't good enough. So like, that's like the merit of this card. Like, just World Legacy, World Chalice that you normal summoned, can be used with Machine Duplication, and can actually just do things. It just like, lets you play through some boards going second, potentially. I just, I really like this card. I might bump it to 3. I actually really like it. Um, it's actually just, I really like it. I really like Machine Dupe. I can't say enough good things about that card because it's a plus one. It lets you play games without Venus. Uh, it's one of those cards that's it's fulfilling all the things that I want the deck to do right now. Uh, that the deck has sort of lost access to do because we lost things like Gofu uh, and Dandelion. But for one of us, powerful one of Soul Charge, Reborn, Foolish, Emergency Teleport for Chosen and for Ogre. And I'm playing a copy of World Legacy's Heart. I'm not playing World Legacy Succession. Uh, I thought that card was very good in theory. I started testing it at two of it, eventually dropped it to one, eventually dropped it to zero and replaced it with World Legacy's Heart. Uh, because Succession, if we didn't have Monster Reborn in the game, I would probably have Succession in this slot. But Succession is strictly a worse Soul Charge and Reborn. It doesn't really benefit your starting points of your play. Uh, so it's like it's actually just like 100% worse than these cards because at least Soul Charge and Reborn they can be used at the very start of your play to try and make things good. Whereas Succession is only a card that's good for play the further into your turn you get after you've made your first Ningirsu. Like it's not even worth doing at any point before that because you want to be using uh, Succession to do things like bring back Firewall Dragon that you've used, uh, bring back Venus if you've uh, linked away with it and you drew into like Exodius or whatever. And it's just one of those cards that, like, even searching it off World Legacy World Chalice on turn three is pretty lackluster. If we're playing a card to search um, off World Legacy World Chalice, it, strictly to be a card to search, it's pretty lackluster to, like, draw and or to search because, like, your board is usually pretty established. Um, and even then, like, if your board did get broken, it probably got completely broken, meaning that you have to be able to put a link marker on the field and then play it. Uh, World Legacy's Heart, I actually just started liking it a lot better, again, because of the advent of Sir Yuja. Um, this was a card that I hadn't been testing since Sir Yuja came out. Um, I tested it in the past, didn't like it in the past before Sir Yuja, but post Sir Yuja, I actually started warming up to this card a bit more. Because, one, it's searchable on turn three, yeah, that's cool, that's good. This probably would complement the Eva package just as well, because you'd be able to add, like, Lee back to your hand again and do all that. Uh, but basically... This card actually, while it doesn't help assist you in starting plays, again, it's one of those cards that helps you play your hands that don't have Venus, uh, and it, even the hands that do have Venus, then it just makes those hands a bit more powerful, uh, because if you draw it, then like you can use this pre Ningirsu. That was the problem I had with Succession, is that it wasn't really worthwhile to use at any point before making Ningirsu. It didn't really contribute to anything before making your Ningirsu or your first Saryuja, whereas World Legacy's Heart is good at any stage after you've started playing with World Chalice names, regardless of whether you've made Ningirsu or Saryuja or not. 
so this is a card that could come out for Upstart Goblin, uh, just to make the deck a, into a 39 card more consistent deck. Definitely an idea I've been playing with, but as of right now, I 100% like this card way more than Succession. Like I said, I've put a lot of testing into this deck over the past week, uh, a little bit over a week as well. Uh, and, like, Succession was just so subpar in every single application. Uh, but the last two cards in the deck are two copies of the Fam Knights of Shadebringer 9. This card is a constant overperformer. Um, it just lets you, you know, put an Imduk on field without normal summoning, and that's huge. That means that this card is essentially another copy of Brilliant Fusion. It just doesn't get you access to Lee, but that's fine. But that's for the ma that's it for the main deck. That is a 40-card main. Uh, for the extra deck, three copies of Imduk, which is standard, one copy of Link Spider. The only Link 2s I play are one Proxy, one Eve, and one Aurum. I needed to make room uh, for stuff. I'm not playing any of the Nightmare Link 2s. Like I said, those Goblin is redundant because you have Brilliant Fusion and you have Imduk, and Goblin doesn't stack on top of those. If it did, then it would be worth playing in this deck. Um, but like by the time you get to a Goblin, you should have already been able to make this, and that's like the exact same thing, except better, for your World Chalice deck. Uh, and also, like Cerberus and Phoenix... Um, they don't really do anything for you because, like I said, like this deck sucks at going second. Uh, by the time you would make Cerberus or Phoenix to out a monster or to out a back row, you had to summon Venus in 90% of your scenarios in order to even make that play. And if Venus goes away, congratulations, you're not making that play anymore. Uh, so, like, the Nightmare cards that, like, remove cards from the field are just not worth it to play in this deck. It's actually just ridiculous. Uh, and the fact that, like, Nightmares require two different names. Um, the fact that you're using Link Monsters to facilitate stepping up in your extra deck into these Nightmare cards makes the extra deck just incredibly packed. And it's just not something you have room for, unfortunately. But, anyway, Nagirsu is the only rank, uh, Link 3 that I play. And then for Link 4s, I play a Firewall Dragon, one Nightmare Griffin, and uh, two Sir Yuja Skull Dreads. Now, uh, Nightmare Griffin is legitimately the only Nightmare that is worth playing because it is the only one that actually facilitates what your deck's win condition is, and that is to put up strong turn one boards. You can reset Reborn, you can reset Heart, uh, you can do stuff like that. That's kind of neat, but usually that effect doesn't matter. You literally just want it for the effect negation, um, and you just summon it off of usually a Soul Charge play. You almost never summon this otherwise, uh, because it's usually way too hard to summon. Um, like, it's, it's just one of those things that, like, this entire deck... I thought that Nightmares were going to be a lot better in World Chalice than in any other list, but it turns out that just because of the way the deck functions, with, again, like, the fact that literally a third of this extra deck is cards that we're stepping up into better into uh, bigger Link monsters into, just make it way too tight. And, like, it's, it's just something that's not, uh, that's not really uh, doable, unfortunately. And you may have noticed the lack of Trigate Wizard. That is because I'm playing two other cards in this place. I'm playing Cyber Dragon Nova and Cyber Dragon Infinity. Now, this is a card that, again, I tested this with the machine duplications uh, way back in the day before we had Trigate Wizard. Loved it then. Um, basically, I went and I, st I took a step back and I was like, I'm never making Trigate Wizard in any hand unless it involves Soul Charge, and even then, half the time, I'm not making Trigate Wizard. Especially now that we have Nightmare Griffin, I typically prefer to make that. So, like... What I wanted to do was I wanted to make machine duplication better in the list, other than just uh, making it like a uh, link material thing. Um, machine duplication, even without machine duplication, is very easy for you to summon Nova into Infinity. Um, just with like Venus plus World Legacy World Chalice, you can typically do that. Uh, Venus plus World Legacy World Chalice plus like a waterfront that you draw um, is still a perfectly fine way to make Infinity and drop Gamma Seal. Uh, but there's actually a theory behind this, and it's actually a theory that I had to step back and uh, and do some uh, some analysis on of like why I was playing Eva and Herald of the Orange Light, and then that ultimately just led to me playing this card. The reason that you played Eva and Herald of the Orange Light, the thing that made Herald of the Orange Light better than it should have been, is the fact of how it interacts with Kyoto Waterfront. With Kyoto Waterfront, if you end your turn with a Gamma Seal on the field and a Kyoto Waterfront at five counters, that is two negations minimum that you're going to give to your opponent through Gamma Seal, and you need to put one more counter on Waterfront in order for it to get a third negation on Gamma Seal. Now, what the thing that made Herald good for was that you would activate Gamma Seal on like one of the first cards they played. And if your opponent didn't actively play cards that went to Graveyard in order to put counters on Waterfront for you, you could negate a monster effect with Herald of the Orange Light. Herald of the Orange Light would force the card into the Graveyard, 
thus putting a th uh, another counter on Waterfront, making it a six counter Waterfront essentially because you've removed counters from it. That means Gamma Seal is going to be negating three cards that turn, meaning that you went from having two negations with Gamma Seal, three if you were lucky, to having three negates on Gamma Seal pretty much at a minimum, and then the one negation with Herald of the Orange Light. This does the exact same thing, and that's also what I think makes it better than Trigate Wizard. Trigate Wizard requires so much setup and so many monsters for it to actually be worthwhile because it requires three for itself, and then it requires at least another five because it requires two Link 2s at least next to it and a Link 1 at minimum above it pointing down to it to co-link it for three. So that's eight monsters into the Trigate, whereas this is just a two-monster investment. Even though it is super specific, that's fine. Your entire deck is revolving around Lee and World Legacy, World Chalice, and Venus. You should be able to get into this card rather easily. But also, that reasoning that I just gave behind Herald of the Orange Light being good with Gamma Seal and good with pairing with Kyoto Waterfront is the exact same thing with Cyber Dragon Infinity. If you put an Infinity on the field plus a Gamma Seal with a Waterfront, Infinity doesn't banish the card at negates like Trigate Wizard does. It puts it in the graveyard, meaning that if you end on a board with Infinity plus Gamma Seal plus a Waterfront with five counters on it, regardless of if your opponent gives you extra counters or not, you can force one extra counter onto Waterfront. So surface level uh, analysis of this card means that it's like it's just better than Trigate Wizard. Um, its removal effect is, in theory, subpar to Trigate Wizard's removal effect because Trigate Wizard can just banish any card on the field, but that requires a theoretical minimum of seven monsters, three for the Trigate and then two for each of the Link 2s pointing to it. Um, like six to seven monsters theoretically go into that, whereas again, this is just a two card investment. Uh, it takes up room in the extra deck, but it's perfectly fine for me. I've actually really been loving this card. I've been loving this card ever since I put it back in. Uh, it's definitely something that I, I implore you guys to like try this out, but rather if you think that my ideas are stupid or whatever, I implore you to try them out and truly test them because the thing is is that the World Chalice lists that have been you know being popularized for the last couple of months, obviously there's something lacking there because the lists aren't doing well enough uh, to like the lists aren't doing well enough to like top big level events like YCSs or anything like that. They're getting some regional success, but like you can get lucky for seven rounds and do well at a regional. Like that's that's not hard. What is hard is topping an 11 to 12 round event because that is significantly harder. You have to go from seven instead of going like seven one to top eight a regional, you now have to go ten two just to have a chance at topping. Um, so like the deck sort of needs to go through some sort of like minor innovations to optimize it and i think that like machine dupe is one of those cards that is just way too under the radar for people to have been testing in the recent months uh there were definitely people testing it in the past but i think it's really just it's just flown under the radar but the card actually just got really good with sir yuja um and it was something that i just never really took the time of day to actually uh to look at again until recently but anyway sorry this deck profile was as long as it is jesus is like 23 minutes uh, but I had a lot of things to explain, even though I tried to explain some things uh, as clearly and cohesively as I could. But anyway, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or whatever, leave them in the comments down below. I will try to address them. Like I said, I implore you to try this list out, or specifically, try out Machine Duplication, uh, try out like um, the Cyber Dragon Infinity Package, and see how it works for you, because it's been working like wonders for me, because of the reasons I told you. Like it's just, Infinity pairs really well with Gamma Seal Waterfront, and like machine duplication lets you play hands out better um it's just an additional combo piece all that sort of stuff and like i said world chalice as it stands in previous lists has not been doing well on a large scale event even though this deck has theoretically one of the highest ceilings in the format in terms of capability for play so like the deck obviously needs to go through some sort of metamorphosis and like we have to think outside of the box with things that we're testing, and I think that Machine Dupe is one of those cards that just, like I said, flew under the radar. But anyway, like I said, questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Check out the links in the description to my Facebook fan page as well as my Twitch channel if you want to go follow that and get notified when I do my next live stream. Then definitely go do that if you are interested. But other than that, like I've already said, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for your time as usual. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.